Check him. So we are live. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing very, very well. We are in for another session of uh, this strange period that we find ourselves in that we're doing at the minute with Shift Success, where we're doing a lot of Facebook Lives into the big community. And today I'm joined by another phenomenal cohort member. Um, this guy has been with us since October, late October um, from cohort four. And um, he's actually been through a bit of a rebrand recently. So he had an initial company, which was uh, R&B Tiling. And now he's gone on to rebrand his business to Transformative Tiling. And he is absolutely grabbing business by the balls. Um, so he's going to share with you his story, his wins, his challenges, and hopefully going to really empower you and inspire you going forward. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Jones. Ricky, how are you? How are you, Alex? Nice to be here. I am very, very well. Are you enjoying the sun? I am. It's, it's, it's very nice down here. It's very nice. Right. So, yeah, no, it's, it's all good. Thank good you. stuff. Good stuff. So thanks for your time. And Ricky, what I'd like to start off by asking, um, so someone, can, someone who's watching this can get a bit of context about who you are. Um, what force was you from? When did you join that force? And what did you do in the force? Okay. So um, I joined the Met in 2002. Uh, May 2002, um, we started on response. So I did about two or three years on response and then moved over to the, uh, the Borough Crime Squad when, they, when the boroughs had them, which was great. It was brilliant. Um, yeah, I spent a good few years there. Then it was a natural stepping stone, I thought, and I joined the Territorial Support Group. Mm -hmm. TSG, probably people may know it as. Um, again, great times you know i met some great people and some great times and then i finished the last four or five years in covert policing which was brilliant as well um but yeah so from response to sort of tsg uh, with a bit of crime squad and uh covert policing and i left in december 2018 so nearly 16 months ago wow Okay, how many years is that then? Is that eighteen in total? Just under, just under seventeen. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, just about sixteen and a half years. Wow, wow, it's a long time, long time. Yeah. Um, great. So before I go on, I have to ask you, you know, you know, why, why business, and why did you, you know, kind of leave early, and what are your thoughts around that? Um, for those who are watching right now, don't forget to drop a like, uh, comment, so we can hear, make sure that you can hear us, and also if you're watching back on replay, don't forget to type in replay as well. Um, so, so Ricky you know, eight, seven, 16 and a half years in, um, you know, your, your pension's probably at sight, I'm assuming. Um, you're on the other side now, you're going that way. Why did you start thinking about business? Okay, um, it, it kind of come out of the blue, really. Um, uh, some things were developing in, in the job and with some close friends of mine that um, obviously I won't go into, but, you know, that, 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 kind of changed my outlook on the job. I love the job. I used to live and breathe the job, you know, as I'm sure many people do. But it just suddenly started to switch and, um, you know, it just, it wasn't going the way that I'd anticipated it to go. I wanted it to be my career. I wanted to do my 30 years, um, but it wasn't going that way now. Um, I, I'd been in the leisure industry before that. I, I didn't really have that many... I know we've all got lots of skills, but many hands-on skills, you know? So uh, my friend, um, who was a fireman, we, he, we said, why don't we just do, learn a trade? I thought, you know what, that's a great idea. You know, I've, I've done a bit of work with my dad in the past. He's been in the building industry for years. Um, so I'd seen, I've grown up seeing him working in the building industry. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, if it all doesn't pan out in the, in, in the, in the job, then, you know, I've got something to fall back on. So, um, eight years, this, right, well, eight years, about a month ago, we, uh, done our initial training and, uh, started up as R&B Tiling. And 
and it sort of went from there. So it was mainly I, I started to fall out of love with the job, mm. and you've mm. probably heard that many a time before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, so basically, just to go back on that, you you know, you're six and a half years in, something's happened in the job where you just start to feel like, you know what, maybe I don't want to do this the rest of my career. And you and a friend who is a fireman, you said. That's right. Yep. Um, then decide to go and go into a trade, and that trade is tiling. Yes, tiling. Yeah. And then you both form a company, and then you get to work. So when you actually start your, you know, your tiling business, are you working full time in the job at this point, or do you leave first, or you know, what what's going in that situation? Okay, so no, I'm still in the job. So it, uh, initially, it was just to, to top up the monthly, the monthly wage, basically, you know, because. At most, you may get three days off, depending on what shifts you were working. You may at most get three days off now. You know, I was I was fitting bits and pieces on them three days off. You know, whereas, whereas Ben, my mate, he, he could do a lot more because they do different, obviously different shifts. I was doing work before going on to lates. And then when I was finishing earlys, I was going to price jobs and stuff like that. So it was, I was basically working two full-time jobs. Mm. Mm, okay. I'm still full time in the police. Yep. And still trying to build the business. Great. Okay. And did you find yourself because you've obviously transferred into business now? Did you feel like you was enjoying business more, or you know, did you just feel like you was earning more money now, or you know, or just was it due to time and you chose business? I just, I, it's initially I'm not going to lie. It was to top up the monthly the monthly wage, you know, yep. um, with the extra money yep. and, and things like that. But as, as time progressed and, and it's it built and built and built, yep. I've got a different outlook, you know, that maybe this is the way to go. Mm. You know, maybe there is something better out there than the job, mm. you know, and, and eventually, I'm sure we'll go into a bit more later, but eventually it got to that stage where I had to make that choice you know, Amazing. six months ago, I literally had to make that choice. Um, it was either, you know, stay in and face the consequences or get out and do something about it. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Amazing stuff. Okay. So was you, in the, was you in the pension at this time? Was you still in there or would you, did you stop that or? No, I was still in the pension, but obviously yep. during that time it was going through all the change and nobody really knew mm -hmm. what was going on, you know, from yeah. when I joined. There was already there already had been a change in the pension, mm. but I was still allowed to stay on the old pension. Then this new pension was coming in with all these different criteria, and mm. it, it. But to be honest with you, that wasn't the reason why I decided to go into business and leave. Mm. Yeah, the pension will be great in many years to come, mm. what, whatever it will be. Mm. But it's not. It wasn't the deciding factor for mm. me. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Great. Um. If I was to meet you in a pub, then, you know, what, what would you say? You know, if I was to say, hey, what do you do? How do you introduce yourself? Um, obviously, I'll say hello back. I'll say I'm uh, Ricky, um, the owner of Transformative Tiling, award-winning company. And we basically work with people uh, to make their dreams become a reality by creating lovely, beautiful tiled spaces in their homes. Amazing. That's amazing. And the reason I asked that question, because I've heard that before and you are very different to, um, you know, this might, I don't want to offend anyone, but you're very, a lot of people have a stereotypical um, probably outlook towards tradespeople. And when I first met you, you're very different. Um, you come across that you care. You always put the customer first. You generally have got a heart of gold when it comes to your clients. I've seen your work. I've seen what your customers are saying as well. Um, what have you discovered you know, in your space, that are the common problems that keep occurring in relation to your into your customers. Yeah, it becomes it, it, it before going on this process with yourself. The problems I've probably seen in front of me beforehand. I've just never put two and two together. You know, and but the main problems we see, are, uh, especially with like the the the. Uh, the, the niche market I, I want to go into, it, it's all about time scales. Because mm. basically, if I'm say doing working for a builder or a building company, they need they need time scales. Mm. You know, I, and the things I hear all the times so, are oh, this is overrun. They haven't turned up, or they was meant to finish a week ago, and it's like it's 
you know, that's fine if, if you're the only trade, but if you've got another trade going in, that's a knock-on effect for everyone. And people just want to know, you know, some people have to move out of their house to get it, to get it redone. Really they just want to know when they can move back in, mm. you know? So timescales was massive. The, the amount of people were kept saying that that was, that was an issue. Mm. Um, quality of work all, always pops up as well. <clears throat> you know, there's, like you mentioned uh, about a minute ago, about me being different you know there are many cowboys out there and the building industry as a whole hasn't got a great a great name because there are so many people who don't care out there and just want to cut corners and you know they get paid up front and then they disappear and and it all just creates this bad name for us all because mm -hmm. everyone thinks oh he's in is in the building industry he, he must be you know a cheat or a thief or a cowboy or you know mm. um so the quality of work was was is a key thing and the other the other problem we found was the communication you know the amount of times i spoke to customers and, and for, for doing a bit of research you know customers aren't you'd think the customer is probably the most uh, the most important person to keep up to date with stuff mm. but like the amount of times you, you speak to customers and they don't know what's going on from one day to the next, which it doesn't help anyone really. You know, and that customer can be a homeowner or it can be um, the owner of a building company if I'm working directly for them mm. or if I'm working for a plumber. You know, just a lack of communication. So the big three are, are, are missing time scales, quality of work, and the lack of communication. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So that was my next question. So your, your actual type customers are, um, homeowners. So it could be someone like myself, or it could be actually building firms that you work with as well. Yeah. And, and those problems are quite similar with, with both, right? Pro yeah, probably more with working with builders because there's literally, if you're doing a full house renovation, you've got literally every trade. Mm. Where if, you, if you're, if you're just doing a bathroom room, renovation you might have the plumber and the tiler and the decorator whereas if it's a building company it'll be the whole you know the bricklayers you know the the landscapers the yeah the drywall companies you know yeah. plasterers just literally everyone and and all it takes is one or two to be a late and it's just a knock-on effect and then depending who you work for not so much me because my niche market doesn't go up that high in, in, in the terms of how many plots I would do, you know, how many houses I would do in one hit. But these big sites, you see, they, you know, if every company is on like a penalty, if you don't get it finished in time, you get penalised, financially penalised for not finishing on time. Wow. Okay. So what would you say that something makes you different then? It's obviously you care and you've, yeah. you kind of bring that good um, core kind of values into the, into your space, but speed you know you're quick but you are also good at what you do yeah i mean i don't like i don't like put, putting speed in the sentence as the same as quality because sometimes people think oh if he does it too quickly he can't be that good of course so but the speed comes with experience mm. but I, I i literally you know i care about the, the quality of my work you know and 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 i just i just love putting smile on on people's faces when they walk in and, and see it all done. And, and I just love being involved in the process, you know, from start to finish. So it goes back to the communication. You know, some people go in quote, there's the quote, come in, we'll tile it, and then we'll grab it and yeah. go out. And, and that's the options they're given. But there are so many different options you can have when you come into refurbishing your bathrooms or your kitchens. Okay, well, let's talk about that. How does that process look like? Let's say, pretend I'm a customer and I, I want to quote, you know, one of my properties. Um, you know, how, how would that look like? I'd call you, um, you'd get in touch, and what's kind of the first thing you'd take me through? Okay, so it, obviously, you contact me, you could, you know, contact me, phone, email, you know, one of the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. I'll then ring you back and it will arrange, we'll have a brief chat about, you know, what it is you're looking to have done, and we'll arrange a, a visit. Mm -hmm. So whether it's to the house or to a site, you know, something that is, suits you, you know, it, it, a lot of the time we, it, it might be I'm speaking to the lady of the house, but she may want a husband to be there. So I'll try and work it that whoever needs to be there is there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so then we'll go around for a consultation or we'll literally 
walk through the job. You know, they'll chat to me about the ideas they've got, what they want doing. Um, they'll ask me my opinion and I'll just, I'll um, throw my two pennies worth in, should we say. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, it's just a question and answers, you know. So, so when I walk out of there, I've got everything I need and I leave and they're left with full confidence. Um, I can actually do the job that they want. Amazing. So it's this beautiful bathroom or this beautiful kitchen. Great. Yeah. Okay. So they would give you like a visual aspect of what they're looking for. And yep. you would give them the certainty that you're going to do it to their specification. Yeah. Cause during that time is that's the time where you want all the questions and questions to be answered, mm. you know, because everyone knows at the start what's realistic, what's not, what will look good, what won't look good, what's available. Mm. You know, that's what they, sometimes you, you hear that people go in and say, they're there for like five minutes. You know, I don't know, I'm not there for hours, but I like to spend a bit more than five minutes so that, you know, we all get to know each other and right. I actually know what they want. Right. Because it's, okay. it's, it's ultimately it's their, their dream that I'm trying to create. Amazing. So would you go through like things like grout color, the type of tiles, the shape, um, you know, where they want the tiles, what kind of I don't know, angle they could put them on? Yep. Do, you, do you walk through all that? Yeah. So we'd obviously look at a space. You know, some tiles might not fit a certain space that so they want to have tiled, you know, and, and they may not realise that. And when you explain that to them, they go, oh, oh, OK, well, let's have a look at another choice. You know, I've got I've got um, loads of uh, folders with different trims you could have. And I've got a folder with grout colours, a folder with, um, you know, silicon colours. And and I talk about all the prep work and, you know, why I'm, why we do the prep work. Mm. You know, the, the potential pitfalls for not doing it correctly mm. you know and then there's loads of choices out there so there's so many choices out there that people go oh i thought there was only white and gray grout yeah no yeah. there's not there's like yeah. 50 well i've got one that's 50 different colors or shades mm. you know so that's the initial bit of the consultation just so that because then they go out and they'll they'll choose go out and look for tiles fantastic you know, but, they may have gone to look for the wrong sort of tiles that wouldn't give them the right look. Of course, because they don't know what they don't know, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just an experience on their part. You know, yeah. I'm just offering my experience and from the past and what I've done. They yeah. might ultimately say, no, we definitely want these tiles. Can you do it? Of yes, course. we can. Yes, Great. we can. So. Get it. Completely get it. Okay. Okay. Um, so you put a lot of content out there. So um, I know you're going through a rebrand at the minute and transformative tiling will be uh, present soon, but with regards to your content, you know, I've seen your work, um, you know, do, do you get leads that way? Do you get people checking you out on, on social media? Can you share some insights around that? Yeah. So um, since joining, I mean, before the process, I did have a um, be tiling business page, uh, Facebook page, but it was not something I really concentrated on. You know, I was sort of, you know, we'll go out, do the work. Yes, it looked lovely. I'll take the photos and, and everyone's really happy. But since joining the process, social media is massive. And, and, and I don't, I'm not ashamed to say that I was ignorant towards that. You know, I didn't, that wasn't, I don't know about social media and stuff like that since joining the process. But since joining the process, I've started to get my content out there. I'm regularly updating. You know, I'm on Instagram now, which I never did before mm -hmm. um, the process, you know, LinkedIn, you know, and so, and I've had, I've, I've, within the last two months, I've started working with three massive building companies in my local area, purely, I know it sounds terrible, but you kind of stalk them on, on Facebook and Instagram. You like a few of their posts, yep. then you look back at you going, who's this like in my, you know, along that sort of lines. And then they'll ring me up. You know, I had one the other week that rung me up and I was, if they saw me, I was like a 42 year old man jumping around the car park. You know, <laughs> I'd all been wanting to get into this company for ages and just wow. a bit of getting out there showing yourself it's just amazing what can come of it 
Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, so you've obviously, you kind of started your business while she was working uh, full-time in the job. You started to produce money uh, from your business and then you transitioned into business full-time. That's something we recommend you do. Um, and you did that before you joined Shift Success, which is still amazing. Um, but, you know, since since joining, what what do you, you know, what does your vision look like? You've looked, talked about this, this huge client. You know, what kind of other things have, have been going on? Okay, so I've... I've... Since, since joining the process, you know, I've, I've, I've actually, yes, I had, a, I had a, a decent business before joining the process, but since joining the process, it, it kind, it's kind of sort of, I know it's going to sound terrible, but I'm doing it the right way, should we say? Mm -hmm. I kind of felt like I was booming along, you know, and, and, and sort of waiting for people to, to tell me what to do, but now mm -hmm. I'm sort of taking initiative and, and doing it doing it myself with the help of you and the other uh, mentors and the other cohorts are phenomenal. You know, the, the advice you get from everyone is phenomenal. And building these relationships with these building companies, you know, I work for six or seven different plumbing companies as well now. You know, I work for five massive building companies in my local area mm. on, on top of my, you know, the regular bathrooms and kitchens I get from just normal leads mm. you know so I, I, I'm not going to lie I reckon since you know within the last year and since joining Shift as it says I reckon I've doubled my amount of leads that I get yeah yeah you don't convert everyone but that's that's the, the that's nature, you know that's business but it's just in, it's at least doubled I reckon the leads are just from being out there and doing just doing things the right way and, and saying the right stuff and doing doing the right stuff and presenting amazing. yourself correctly amazing so talk to me about the award winning that you won that you know talk to me how did that come about okay so um it's it, it it's kind of a local thing so you'd have like in where in hartford you'll have your, your local nominations and then say where you may live you'll have your local ones as well you know, all around the country, there'll be, you know, local ones. And it's based on, like, your quality of work and your reviews from customers and what they have to say about you. Yeah, so that was, the nominations went in in December and in February we got the results, which, so I then, I was the winner in, we're in Hartford area, the local area. And the massive one, which came as a shock, was I won the National Award for UK Home Improvements. And I didn't expect that. How did that make you feel? You know, I know this is an amazing thing, but to give us some context to it, you've, you've, you're now being recognized for your beautiful craft. You know, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's even eight years on, it, it still makes me, you know, it, I don't know what's, it, it still gives me a buzz. You know, I'm not bored of it. I'm definitely not bored of, of winning leads, winning awards and, and things like that it still gives me that great buzz and when that email come for us i you know when certain things happen in life and you think i remember where i was when that happened hmm. i know exactly where i was when i got that email and like i couldn't bring my wife quick enough just to say you know what well, i was i was overwhelmed with it because it's just someone else or something else recognizing your ability and your skill and your business amazing Amazing stuff. So what, what year did you actually start business? What year was that? 2012, April, 2012. Wow. 2012. Okay. So you've been building up, building up, building up. And then in 2018, that's when you left the yeah. job. Um, I believe you as well. You are approaching the six figure mark in revenue. Yes. Uh, pretty cool. Um, how does that make you feel knowing your wages in the job, knowing that you was paid there, whatever that was compared to now, how does that make you feel the differences? In what, just in lifestyle or? Just the in, value, like, you know, you're paying pay thousands of pounds for someone's bathroom compared to, you know, your actual wage. These people are, it's, it's massively different because, yeah, I was paid a wage in, in the job and I, and, I, and I did love the job, I, you know, and I will always love certain aspects of the job. But people are parting with their, their hard-earned cash so you can create you know, their, their dream bathroom or their dream kitchen, that they're going to walk in every day and go, wow, yes, we made the right choice. You know, they go out to work to earn that money to give to you. You know, it's, 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 it's 
it, you know, every time I win a lead, every time I, I see the money transfer into the bank, it still gives me a buzz. You know, whether it's a small job or a massive job, I, I still get the buzz and, you know, celebrate with, you know, <laughs> depending amazing. on what, what, you know, what it is. Good stuff. No, amazing. What are some of the mindset differences you've experienced from working in the job to in the business? Okay. Uh, so without uh, going into too much, so, so I was doing two jobs in effect for six years. Um, and that had a massive strain on my family life. Um, me personally, I, 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 you know, without saying a hundred percent, as close as I can get, I reckon if I was still in a job and, and, um, doing the tiling at the same time, I would have probably either had a nervous breakdown and, or, um, probably lost my family. That's, that's the truth behind it. Yeah. Because, I wasn't around. I was. I was too focused. Because when I get to when I get something in my mind, I'm quite focused with yeah. with, with it. Now, being in a job, obviously, that's got its own stresses and strains. Anyway, mm. but then trying to build a business on top of that, mm. you know, people are going, "You're crazy. Mm. What are you doing?" And then, you know, my wife would say, "You know, you're never around. You know, you're missing out on stuff with with Becky." Mm. Um, you miss out on family time. And to me, family, you know, I had a pretty decent upbringing, mm. you know, but family's everything to me. You Would know, you say you have more time now you're in business? Oh, loads more time. It, for, I can choose. I know this sounds arrogant, but I can choose what I want to do. Mm. I'm my own boss. You know, yes, I will still have to go out and, 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 and earn some money and, and do my job. But, you know, I, you, the sports days, the the school plays, the you know picking up early from school because my wife works. You know, it is I'm taking the stress off the family as well for me mm. just being around and loads more time. It's it, loads. Wow. <laughs> loads more time. Amazing, amazing. Okay, and um, what some skill sets have you transferred from being a police officer into your own business? I think as um, I think as police officers, all police officers, we've all got massive, massive skill sets that we probably don't know we've actually got, you know, and I think my wife hit the, the nail on the head, you know, when, when as a police officer, you can walk into a situation and have straight away, you just ooze authority, you know, you, you've got the confidence, you know, so confidence, um, I can talk to people, you know, the amount of different situations you in the job that you have to adapt to talk to different people, you know. So going to actually speak to a client about a bathroom shouldn't really be up there with what you've dealt with in the past. But you you move them skills across about adding, you know problem solving. Mm. You know you do come across problems that can't be helped or is you can moan about them, but they're not going to go away. So it's just mm. how you adapt to them problems. You know, communication, chatting, you know, like I say, chatting with people. And it just being generally just being myself, you know. I just I, I wasn't myself and I love being myself. You know, I'd like to think that quite a nice chill out kind of guy. Yeah, we have our moments, but I just I'm I'm happy I like being back where I was when I first started the job. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, what would you say has been one of your biggest highlights so far i know you've had a few but if you had to pick one what, what is that i know we got the awards which was 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 huge and we was going to have the ceremony but obviously covid19 mm -hmm. paid to that so hopefully that will come in later on in the year mm -hmm. but some of the some of the hi highlights or the main highlights is is um uh, reigniting the uh um partnerships i had with building firms Mm. You know, three four years ago mm. whereas i can't because i couldn't commit to their their work yeah no i couldn't say yeah i've, I've got two days off and then i'll be back in five days mm. <laughs> to finish off it yeah. kind of wash so building them bridges again mm. you know I've, I've i've gone back to three or four different firms who i used to work with in the past and i'm now working for them properly you know that, that for me that's a highlight that's massive for me because you know, before this process, and you know, got to get yourself out there, you know, your content and chat to people, I probably would have lost them. 
to mm. somebody else. So it might not sound like, obviously the awards, but that might, might not sound like a massive highlight, but mm. for me, that's massive. That's huge. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, what's your vision for your future? You know, where do you see yourself? You're growing quite fast. Where would you, you know, are you, are you hiring? Are you recruiting? Are you, you know, are you obviously going into building firms now? Um, what's next for Transformative Thailand? Next is to be the number one go-to tiling company in my local area and the surrounding counties of where, wow. I, where I live. Um, I work, I spoke about my dad a little bit earlier. My dad works for me as well now. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, um, he's been a massive, massive help throughout my whole life and still is now. <laughs> you know, It's a bit weird that he's kind of working for me, but we don't look at it like that. We mm-hmm. just look at it as kind of like, not a partnership, but we sort of bounce off one another. Yeah. Um, I've now recently started to bring my nephew into the company as well. Wow. Okay. Because um, it, it's it is very family orientated. You know, we I like to think of us with, as a new generation mm-hmm. with the old school values. Yeah. Um. So I'm sort of training him up, but, but obviously everything's been put on hold for the time being. Obviously, but yeah. once he's all started up again, he'll come back in and and. You know, he may two, three years down the line say, you know, actually, this isn't for me. But, you know, if, if I can help him as well, install some values and and guide him along the path, then I'm happy with that. I love that. So you're building like a, a legacy family, right? Sorry, a f- family orientated business. Yeah. A legacy. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Um, and, and for people, you know, watching this and they may be in your situation where, you know, there were had a business, they've in the job and the job wasn't like, um, there was feeling different about the job. What kind of key insight or, or what was, what would be some of your advice to someone who's, who's feeling a bit, you know, down about the job? Um, just, just have a think. I mean, just, just sit down, just take whether it's, you know, a couple of your uh, rest days, obviously we call them success days even if it's a rest just have a just have a sit down and think where where you're at and where you're going to be at in two or three years time there is i never thought there was the grass screen on the other side and some more often sometimes it's not but in this situation it is there trust me there is other things out there apart from being in a job now the cohorts that i work with on cohort four i would suggest 80%, 80%, you might correct me on that, are still in the job. Correct, you know? yeah. And some of them want to stay in the job, but some of them are looking to come out of the job and then they're doing something about it. Mm. You know, the amount of people you hear moaning the job, but then like they don't do anything about it. I used to be one of them. Yeah, 100% I used to be one of them. But I eventually did do something about it. But, so, but have a think, have a think that where you are at now and where you're going to be, where the job's going to be in two or three years time you know it, it, it's there is stuff out there if you really want to push for it yeah, there's always stuff out there if you really want to push for it but it's down to the individual person to go out and, and and actually do it amazing great advice great advice um so where can people reach out to you where can people connect with you where can people you know chat to you if they need to okay so um at the moment we're still um operating should we say under r&b tiling which will very soon become transformative time and i can't wait just waiting to get everything into place so we are on facebook under the r&b tiling probably the best thing to do um is to add me as a friend on facebook which will be great and then we can keep you regularly updated with with what's going on with the transformative tiling then once the page is up and running you can then come and like the page and see some of our fantastic work um if you want to uh, drop me a like email it's r.btiling at yahoo.com that will change yeah. <laughs> uh, but as it is at the moment that's that and again just message me on on facebook and you know even don't matter where you live if you've got any questions or you're uncertain about stuff just give us a shout amazing stuff ricky um you know again i say this with with the co-members we've been speaking to and every co-member but you know myself the team really proud of you and the cohort is proud of you and i know your family are proud of you for what you've accomplished so far i know this is the start of your journey with shift success since october um and you are smashing it and we can't wait to see you flourish beyond this so uh again thank you for your time i really appreciate it and if anyone's got any questions for myself or ricky 
please do ask away more than happy to and um and yeah thanks so much for your time ricky that's right can i say one more thing sorry alex I know oh, you're yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, so, so so i want to thank you and my family thank you as well because shift to success has been some of the pieces of the jigsaw that has allowed us to still be a family and I'm, I'm, I know that sounds all corny and stuff like that, but I generally, if, if if anyone is thinking about doing stuff outside a job or creating a business, please, please go to one of these quick start days. You'll 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 be blown away. Sorry, just throw that in there. I probably should have thrown that in there. She's trying, trying to make me cry live on on uh, on Facebook Live. Sorry. What are you doing to me, mate? Ah, so, um, no, it's, it's been phenomenal. So I do apologise. <laughs> uh, no, mate, thank you so much, and um, you know we're we're so proud of you, and um, we can't wait to see you flourish, mate. Really can't. Um, like I said, if anyone's got any questions for Ricky, please do let us know. I'm more than happy to answer them for them. And and everyone who's watching, please uh, stay safe during these times. Um, and thank you again for those who are in the services right now, NHS or the police for what you're doing and, and keeping us all safe as well. So, um, take care, Ricky. Thank you again so much. And, uh, I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Yeah. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.